this is God's Word to Feed Your Soul Ministry. Today, you're going to hear some stuff that you may or may not heard before. This message comes straight from the Holy Spirit. I am sp sp spreading the Word of God and daring what He wants me to do. People look at me different since I have became a preacher. God has called me into the ministry. The world's view of Easter is a Easter egg hunt, Easter bunnies, Easter baskets, Easter lilies, tulips, Easter candy. The Easter holiday has become a commercialized. Easter is a pagan holiday. Worship creations, not the creator. Easter is a worship, a spring goddess that is celebrate spring in winter. Everything is asleep. Everything spring, everything starts to grow. They turn means of Easter into a Passover what Jesus died and rose from the dead. It started Exodus chapter 12. God started the holiday. Jesus celebrated the holiday. Passover is seven to eight days long. Jesus died on Friday at about 3 p.m. in Mark 27, 46. He was buried the day in the evening, Mark twenty seven fifty nine. He rose from the dead on Sunday, a day after the Sabbath, in Mark twenty eight one. It was witnessed by women's in Mark twenty eight. Mark chapter fourteen talks about the Last Supper, the meaning of the Passover holiday, the spirit of death passing over the homes after seeing the blood on the door frames. It is the lamb shield blood that led up to Jesus. In Exodus, the priests sacrifice animals or lamb's blood to cover over the Jesus is the sinless lamb that was slain for all sin and sinners. The elder thought he was talking about the temple, but he was talking about himself, tearing down the temple, which was his body and rebuilding it three days later. The leaders and elders was once Jesus to be crucified because Jesus said he was the Messiah. They said he was committing blasphemy, saying that he was God, which he was and will always be. People go to church on Easter Sunday. They think it will make up for the rest of the year. God wants more than that from us. He wants us to have much closer relationship with him. Once or twice a year does not make a relationship. Jesus loves you so much, he got beaten and bloody pope. He died for you, people of all race. You are free from the debt of sin. Jesus paid your bills in full from the very beginning of Adam and Eve until the last man and woman. Jesus paid the bill in full. Jesus is alive forever. You need to have something to do with him, not the world's Easter, the true Easter. In the Ten Commandments, it says, do not put anyone before God. You put bunnies in eggs, Easter baskets, toys, kids before God. You are worshiping them, not God. You tell the kids the Easter bunny is coming. You are lying to your kids. We'll all are on our way to hell. Jesus died for all sin. Jesus is, is was, and will always be without sin. He was nailed on a cross for your sin and for all mankind. The Ten Commandments says, do not lie. Tell your kids that, that a fake and false idol, a Easter bunny, is coming. You are sinning. You can ask Jesus for forgiveness. For forgiveness. Turning and twisting Jesus' resurrection into a kid's holiday. The holiday was never in the Bible. The Bible tells about Jesus that he died for all sin and rose three days later. Since it is not in the Bible, God does not want me, you, or anyone to celebrate it. God wants you to have a meal and celebrate of Jesus, your King. He died and is alive today. Celebrate Easter with a meal. 
It is a resurrection Sunday, not a Easter Sunday. You cannot have Jesus and the pagan worldly way. It does not work. It falls under the same rules. Have no other gods or masters. People go to church on Easter, open up a Bible, listen to a sermon, worship and sing, pray songs, then go home. Celebrate the pagan holiday. God says, I am a jealous God. You are to have no other gods before me. You need to turn the pagan holiday back to the way that God made it to be. Easter egg hunts change the focus back to Jesus, back to praising God. Let's go and get glory. Give God glory. Sin, it was he who made it in the first place. You are walking down the wrong street. You are looking up to see Jesus on the cross. It is your choice. It is a crossroad. You can go down the life of sin, or you can go with Jesus down the straight or narrow paths. It is your choice. You choose the right or wrong, heaven or hell. More people get fired up for the world. Kick the world out your life. Put God in your life. Get fired up and fire for Jesus. Get happy that Jesus, you can go to heaven only if you have a relationship with Jesus. Jesus is alive. I am saved because of Jesus. Went to the cross. Let us celebrate the resurrection holiday. Let us feast and put our mind on Jesus. Put 100% of our heart and so on Jesus. Focus on Jesus. Jesus loves you. Don't ignore the truth that's Jesus. Put the time into having a relationship with God. God gave you the talent and money. Praise him. Glorify him. Put down your phone. Ignore technology. If you aren't looking at the Bible on your phone or trying to get closer to God, it is a uh, unless tool m make ignore the world in the end you for forever will thank you now i'm going to talk some scripture about jesus and about what happened leading up to jesus's death jesus and what is referred to as palm sunday is in scriptures matthew chapter 21 verses 1 through 11. Jesus comes to Jerusalem as king. As they approached Jerusalem and came to Bethpage on the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples saying to them, go to the village ahead of you and at once you will find a donkey tied there with her colt by her. Untie them and bring them to me. If anyone says anything to you, say that the Lord needs them and he will send them right away. That this took place to fulfill what was spoken through the prophet. Say to daughter Zion, See your king comes to you, gentle and riding on a donkey, and on a colt, a foal of a donkey. The disciples went and did as Jesus had instructed them. They brought the donkey and the colt and placed their cloaks on them for Jesus to sit on. A very large crowd spread their cloaks upon the road, while others cut branches from the trees and spread them out on the road. The crowds that went ahead of him and those that followed shouted, Hosanna to the son of David. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest heaven. When Jesus entered Jerusalem, the whole city was stirred and asked, Who is this? The crowds answered, This is Jesus, the prophet from Nazareth in Galilee. The Last Supper in Matthew chapter 26, verses 17 through 30. On the first day of the festival of unleavened bread, the disciples came to Jesus and asked, Where do you want us to make preparations for you to eat the Passover meal? He replied, Go into the city to a certain man and tell him, The teacher says, My appointed time is near. I am going to celebrate the Passover with my disciples at your house. So the disciples did as Jesus had directed them and prepared the Passover meal. When evening came, Jesus was reclining at the table with the twelve, 
And while they were eating, he said, Truly I tell you that one of you will betray me. They were very sad and began to say to him, one after another, Surely you don't mean me, Lord. Jesus replied, The one who has dipped his hand into the bowl with me will betray me. The Son of Man will go just as it is written about him, but woe to that man who betrays the Son of Man. It would be better for him if he had not been born. Then Judas, the one who would betray him, said, Surely you don't mean me, Rabbi. Jesus answered, You have said so. While they were eating, Jesus took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body. Then he took a cup, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink from it, all of you. This is my blood of the covenant, which is poured out for for the forgiveness of sins. I tell you, I will not drink this fruit of the vine from now on until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. Matthew chapter 26 verses 31 through 75. Then Jesus told them, This very night you will all fall away on account of me. For it is written, I will strike the shepherd and the sheep of the flock will be scattered. But after I have risen, I will go ahead of you into Galilee. Peter replied, Even if all fall away on account of you, I never will. Truly I tell you, Jesus answered, This very night before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. But Peter declared, Even if I have to die with you, I will never disown you. And all the disciples said the same. Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane. And he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him. And he began to be sorrowful and troubled. And he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Going a little further, he fell with his face to the ground and prayed, My father, if it is possible, may this cup be taken from me, yet not as I will, but as you will. He returned to his disciples and found them sleeping. Couldn't you men keep watch with me for one hour? he asked Peter. Watch and pray so that you will not fall into temptation. The spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. He went away a second time and prayed, My father, if it is not possible for this cup to be taken away, unless I drink it, may your will be done. When he came back, he again found them sleeping because their eyes were heavy. So he left them and went away once more and prayed a third time, saying the same thing. Then he looked at the disciples and he said to them, upon returning, Are you still sleeping and resting? Look. The hour has come, and the Son of Man is delivered into the hands of sinners. Rise, here comes my betrayer. While he was still speaking, Judas, one of the twelve, arrived, and with him was a large large crowd, armed with swords and clubs, sent from the chief priests and elders of the people. Now the betrayer had arranged a sign with them. The one I kiss is the man, arrest him. Going at once to Jesus, Jesus, Judas said, Greetings, Rabbi, and kissed him. Jesus then replied, Do what you came for, friend. The men stepped forward and seized Jesus and arrested him. With that, one of Jesus' companions reached for his sword, drew it out, and struck the servant of the high priest, cutting off his ear. Put your sword back in its place, Jesus said to him. For all who draw the sword will die by the sword. Do you think that I cannot call on my father and he will at once put at my disposal more than twelve legions of angels? But how then would the scriptures be fulfilled by the prophets that say it must happen this way? In that hour, Jesus said to the crowd, Am I leading a rebellion that you have come out with swords and clubs to capture me? Every day I sat in the temple teaching, and you did not arrest me. But all this has taken place so that the writings of the prophets might be fulfilled. Then the disciples deserted him and fled. Those who had arrested Jesus took him to Caiaphas, the high priest, where the elders and teachers of the law had assembled. But Peter followed him at a distance up to the courtyard of the high priest. 
he entered and sat down with the guards to see what the outcome would be. The chief priests and the whole Sanhedrin religious court were looking for evidence against Jesus so that they could put him to death. Finally, two witnesses came forward and declared, saying that Jesus said, I am able to destroy the temple of God and rebuild it in three days. Then the high priest Caiaphas stood up and asked Jesus, Are you not going to answer? What is this testimony these men are bringing against you? But Jesus remained silent. The high priest said to him, I charge you under oath by the living God to tell us if you are the Messiah, the Son of God. You have said so, Jesus replied. But I say to all of you, from now on you will see the Son of Man sitting at the right hand of the Mighty One and coming down on the clouds of heaven. Then the high priest tore his clothes and said, He has spoken blasphemy. Why do we need any more witnesses? Look now, you have heard the blasphemy. What do you think? He is worthy of death, they answered him back. Then they covered Jesus' face and they struck him with their fists. Others slapped him and said, Prophesy to us, Messiah, who hit you? Peter was sitting out in the courtyard and a servant girl came to him. You were with Jesus of Galilee, she said, but he denied it before them all. I do not know what you're talking about, he said. Then he went out to the gateway where another servant girl saw him and said to the people there, This fellow was with Jesus of Nazareth. He denied it again with an oath. I don't know the man. After a little while, those standing there went up to Peter and said, Surely you are one of them. Your accent gives you away. Then he began to call down curses and he swore to them. I do not know the man. Immediately a rooster crowed. And then Peter remembered the words that Jesus had spoken. Before the rooster crows, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and he wept bitterly. In Matthew 27, verse 27, chapter 1 through 31, Early in the morning, all the chief priests and the elders of the people made plans on how to have Jesus executed. So they bound him, led him away, and handed him over to Pilate the governor. Judas, who had betrayed him, saw that Jesus was condemned and was seized with remorse and returned the 30 pieces of silver to the chief priests, the elders. I have sinned, he said. For I have betrayed innocent blood. What is that to us? They replied. That is your responsibility. Judas threw the money into the temple and left. Then he went away and he hanged himself. The chief priest picked up the coins and said it is against the law to put this money into the treasury since it is blood money. They decided to use the money to buy the potter's field as a burial place for foreigners. It has been called the field of blood to this very day. Then what was spoken by the prophet Jeremiah was fulfilled. They took the 30 pieces of silver, the price set on him by the people of Israel, and they used them to buy the potter's field as the Lord commanded me. Jesus stood before the governor Pontius Pilate, and the governor asked him, Are you the king of the Jews? You have said so, Jesus replied. Pilate asked him, Don't you hear the testimony that they are bringing against you? But Jesus made no reply, not even to a single charge, to the great amazement of the governor. It was the governor's custom at the festival to release a prisoner chosen by the crowd. At the time, they had a well-known prisoner whose name was Barabbas. When the crowd had gathered, Pilate asked them, Which one do you want me to release to you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called the Messiah? When Pilate was sitting on the judge's seat, his wife sent him this message, Do not have anything to do with that innocent man, for I have suffered a great deal today, a great deal today in a dream because of him. The chief priests and elders persuaded the crowd, which is a Gentile crowd, to ask for Barabbas and to have Jesus executed. When Pontius Pilate asked, which of the two do you want me to release to you? 
Barabbas, they answered. What shall I do then with Jesus, who is called the Messiah, he asked. And they answered, Crucify him. Why? What crime has he committed? asked Pilate. But they shouted all the louder, Crucify him! When Pilate saw that he was getting nowhere with the crowd, but instead an uproar was starting, he took a bowl of water and washed his hands in front of the crowd. I am innocent of this man's blood, he said. It is your responsibility. His blood is on your hands. The people answered, His blood is on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas to them, but he had Jesus flogged and handed him over to be crucified. Then the governor's soldiers took Jesus into the praetorium and gathered a whole company of soldiers around him. After they had beat him, they stripped him and put a scarlet robe on him and twisted together a crown of thorns and set it upon his head. They put a staff in his right hand and they knelt in front of him and they mocked and made fun of him. Hail to the king of the Jews, they said. They spit upon him and they took the staff and they struck him over and over on the head. After they had mocked him, they took off the robe and put his own clothes back upon him. And then they led him away to crucify him. When they beat Jesus, they beat him. How badly, you ask? His suffering was foretold in the Old Testament. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 52, verse 14. When Jesus walks through the town, the people were so in shock by the sight of him. His body was so marred that he barely resembled a human being. In Isaiah chapter 53, verses 5 through 12, he was pierced for our sins. He was crushed because of our sins and behavior. The punishment that brought us peace was upon him, and by his wounds we are healed. We all, like sheep, have gone astray. Each of us has turned to our own way, and the Lord has laid upon him the iniquity and sins of us all. He was oppressed and afflicted, yet he did not open his mouth. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter, and as sheep before its shearers is silent, so he did not open his mouth. By oppression and judgment he was taken away, yet who of his generation protested? For he was cut off from the land of the living, for the transgression of my people, he was punished. He was assigned a grave with the wicked and with the rich in his death. Though he had done no violence, nor was any deceit in his mouth, yet it was the Lord's will to crush him and cause him to suffer. And though the Lord makes his life an offering for sin, he will see his offspring and prolong his days, and the will of the Lord will prosper in his hand. After he has suffered, he will see the light of life and be satisfied. By his knowledge, my righteous servant will justify many, and he will bear their sins and iniquities. Therefore, I will give him a portion among the great, and he will divide the spoils with the strong, because he poured his life out unto death and was numbered with the sinners and transgressors. For he bore the sin of many and made intercession for the transgressors and sinners. When they are leaving to go to Calvary, they make a man named Simon from Cyrene carry the cross for Jesus, as Jesus is too weak for being beaten and from blood loss to carry it himself. In Matthew chapter 27, verse 32, Jesus, when he gets to Calvary, says, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. In Luke chapter 23, verse 34, he talks with the two thieves in Luke chapter 23, verses 32 through 43, one at his left and one at his right side. One of the criminals shouts out insults at him, saying, Aren't you the Messiah? Save yourself and us. The other criminal said, Don't you fear God? Since you are under the same death sentence, we are criminals and are punished justly for our crimes, but this man has done nothing wrong. He says to Jesus, Remember me when you come into your kingly kingdom. 
And Jesus replies back, Truly I say unto you, today you will be with me in paradise. Matthew chapter 27 verses 45 through 60, Luke chapter 23 verse 44, John chapter 19 verses 23 through 34 say, When the soldiers crucified Jesus, they took his clothes, dividing them into four shares, each one for each of them. But with the undergarment remaining, this garment was a seamless, woven in one piece from top to bottom, and they said, Let us not tear it. Let us decide by lot who will get it. This happens that the scripture might be fulfilled that said, They divided my clothes among them and cast lots for my garment. So this is what the soldiers did. Near the cross of Jesus stood his mother, his mother's sister, Mary the wife of Cleopas and Mary Magdalene. When Jesus saw his mother there and the disciple whom he loved standing nearby, he said to her, Woman, here is your son. And to the disciple, here is your mother. From that time on, the disciple took her into his home. Jesus, knowing that everything now had been finished and so that scripture would be fulfilled, Jesus said, I am thirsty. And they brought out a jar of wine vinegar. They soaked it with a sponge, put the sponge on a stalk of the hyssop plant, and lifted it to Jesus' lips. From noon until three in the afternoon, darkness had came all over the land. At around three, Jesus cried out in a loud voice, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? After that, his, the soldiers that were around him said, Now leave him alone. Let's see if Elijah comes to save him. After he had received his drink, Jesus said, It is finished. And Jesus cried out, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. When he had said this, he breathed his last and gave up his spirit. At that moment, in the temple, the curtain was torn in two from the top to the bottom. The earth shook, the rocks split, and the tombs broke open. The bodies of many holy people who had died were raised to life. They came out of the tombs after Jesus' resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared to many people. When the centurion and those that were guarding Jesus saw the earthquake and all that happened, they were terrified and exclaimed, Surely he was the Son of God. Many women were there watching from a distance that had followed Jesus from Galilee to care for his needs. Among them were Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James and Joseph, and the mother of Zebedee's sons. It was the day of preparation, and the next day was to be a special Sabbath. Because the Jewish leaders did not want the bodies left on the crosses during the Sabbath day, They asked Pilate to have the legs broken and the bodies taken down of the prisoners. The soldier therefore came and broke the legs of the first man that had been crucified with Jesus, and then the man on the other side. But when they came to Jesus, they found that he was already dead. They did not break his legs. Instead, one of the soldiers pierced Jesus' side with a spear, bringing a sudden flow of blood and water. As evening approached, there came a rich man from Arimathea named Joseph, who had himself became a disciple of Jesus. Going to Pilate, he asked for Jesus' body, and Pilate ordered that it be given to him. Joseph took the body, wrapped it in a clean linen cloth, and placed it in his own new tomb that he had cut out of the rock. He rolled a big stone in front of the entrance to the tomb and went away. Matthew 28, after the Sabbath day, at dawn on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat down upon it. His appearance was like lightning and his clothes were white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him, they shook and passed out and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. 
He is not here. He is risen. Just as he said, come and see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he is risen from the dead and that he is going on ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away from the tomb, afraid, yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. They came to him and clasped his feet and worshipped him. Then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, that there they will see me. When the women were on their way, some of the guards went into the city and reported to the chief priests everything that had happened. When the chief priests met with the elders, they devised a plan and gave the soldiers a large sum of money, telling them that you are to say that his disciples came during the night and stole him and his body away while you were asleep. If this report gets to the governor, we will satisfy satisfy him and keep you out of trouble. So the soldiers took the money and did as they were instructed. And this story has been widely circulated amongst the Jews to this very day. All his apostles knew that the Romans had put Jesus to death and that his body had been taken down from the cross and sealed in a tomb. They were sad. They were filled with despair and fear, and they had went into hiding. They believed that Jesus was the promised Messiah, but then their hopes had been shattered. They forgot his promise that he would return from the dead, They felt they had no future. When the eleven disciples went to Galilee, to the mountain where Jesus had told them to go, when they saw him, they worshipped him, but some still doubted. When Jesus came to them and said, All authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Therefore, I tell you to go and make disciples of all peoples and all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and the Holy Spirit, teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And surely I am with you always, to the end of the very age. Jesus stayed on the earth for 40 days after he came back to life, instead of just going up into heaven. This was to show his disciples that he was truly alive. Now a little bit of back history on kind of how pagan holiday of Easter came about. Easter was the celebration and worship of the goddess. She's been called Ostre, Easter, Ostara, depending upon what you find. She was a deity or goddess of the radiant dawn, of upspringing light, a spectacle that brings joy and blessing. Bonfires were lit at Easter, and according to popular belief, at the moment that the sun rises on Easter Sunday morning. Ostara is connected with the German Easter festivities of the land coming back to life after lying dead and bare during the winter months. Many pagan celebrations center on this return of light and the rebirth of the land. These ideas are not new. The pagan Easter had much in common with the May feast and the reception of spring. Through the ages, there seemed to have been other Easter games which the church has tolerated, especially with the custom with the Easter eggs. The Easter eggs are often decorated hard-boiled eggs, as well as now chocolate eggs, that tend to be on the menu for Easter. According to the Catholic Encyclopedia, Because the use of eggs was forbidden during Lent, they were brought out on a table on Easter Day, colored red to symbolize Easter joy. This custom is also found in Oriental churches. And in Oriental and Asian cultures, eggs represent fertility, and red especially mean birth, prosperity, and good fortune. Eggs also represent new life. It is believed that decorating eggs for Easter dates back to the 13th century. According to History.com, the 19th century Russian high society exchanged ornately decorated eggs or even jewel-encrusted eggs on Easter. Some are still there in their museums today. 
Easter bunnies, the Easter bunny arrived in America in the 1700s with German immigrants who settled in Pennsylvania and transported their tradition of an egg-laying hare or bunny. The children, their children made nests in which this creature could lay its colored eggs. Eventually, this custom spread across the U.S. and the fabled Rabbit's Easter morning deliveries expanded to include chocolate, other types of candy, and gifts, while decorated baskets replaced nests. Additionally, their children often left out carrots for the bunny in case he got hungry from all the hopping. Bunnies are not always the animals associated with Easter in every country. Some countries identify the holiday with other types of animals like foxes or cuckoo birds. Easter today. Today, Christians celebrate Jesus' resurrection with prayer and with feasting with their families or with their church. But when we look at the history of Easter, we find that for centuries in the Bible that Passover foreshadowed the death of Jesus. Jewish people have a ceremony in the Passover, remembering the future resurrection of Jesus in the Passover. But he's already come during a Passover from the past. The focus was on the great sacrifice that God would make on a Passover day of the future. But it's already come. We can celebrate today, though, Jesus' death, sacrifice, and resurrection as we allow Jesus Christ's resurrection to become a reality in our daily lives. His death and resurrection is a reminder is of how the will of God overcomes, how it overcomes the forces of evil, how truth prevails, unmasks lies, how love conquers over sin, and how eternal life will even put death to an end one day. But nowhere in the Bible is there any reference to Easter celebrating some spring goddess, bunnies, chicks, chickens, or eggs ever mentioned. Only Jesus Christ and his suffering, death, and triumphant resurrection. Today we are taking the opportunity to share this message with you of the gospel of Jesus Christ and telling you the biblical scriptural truth. Nowhere in the Bible does it say also that to go to church whether it be on Easter or any other day, that you have to dress up, that you have to wear a dress for women or wear dress pants or dress the nine suits for men or women. That is a fallacy. It is a lie. So anybody that says to do that, it's judging you on man's standards. It's not God's standards. God never said any of that. He was preaching and teaching to homeless people, people that were beggars, that were lame, blind, diseased people, also politicians, people that were corrupt in that he would go to their homes, to these sinners' homes, and talk to them. Never did he say you had to be dressed up to do this. God wants you, as you are, to be truthful and to worship him honestly, to have an open and honest relationship with him. That's all he wants. Jesus said, come as you are. I don't care what church you go to, as long as it preaches the right message. Pe people out there want to say, I'm going to this church, I'm going to that church. Does it preach the right message? Does it? Do, do you got to go off a committee? My committee is the Holy Spirit. Everything that comes on my sermon is right from God. I pray on it. God puts it on my heart. I bring it out to you. We're, we want to talk about the true meaning of Easter. The world is so corrupt with this commercialized holiday. It says it nowhere in the Bible that there's an Easter holiday. Now there's a Passover holiday. There's a feast the Last Supper, we're, which, is Passover. which is Passover, we're supposed to feast on the resurrection holiday. I won't call it Easter. I will call it the resurrection holiday. Jesus loves you. God loves you. 
he sent his son here to die for our sins. There's a lot of people out here that's blinded, would rather put their face into a cell phone or a computer or a movie than Jesus Christ. People would rather get pumped up for a election than get pumped up for Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ already paid the debt, the price for all of our sin. I would rather get pumped up for the truth of Jesus Christ than a election. It's good to get pumped up for a election, but Jesus already paid the price. Jesus doesn't lie. He won't lie. He never lied. We're pumped up for some sinners that's going to tell us that they're going to do something then don't do it. that they may or may not do. When Jesus Christ says he's going to do it, he does. he's going to do it. When he tells you, don't do this, it's for our own good. And that's just how it works. Well, it's been good to talk to you and tell you the truth of the Bible. And that's basically what God wanted us to do starting this ministry ministry that it's God's word to feed your soul that the Bible is the truth and the true word of God and we're sending it as God tells us and gives us messages to send out to you and tell you about and this was just one message of many that he has given us and we will see you next time see you next time thank you